Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I'm looking at using CrocoBlock Jet Engine to replace Toolset. I recently updated the WebTNG website where I replaced Toolset with CrocoBlock Jet Engine. Toolset announced that the project is in maintenance mode as they evaluate the impact of the full site editor on their business. Meanwhile, all the other plugins for working with dynamic data have been moving forward at rapid speed. With WordPress, as with technology in general, if you aren't moving forward, then you're losing ground. So I decided to switch away from Toolset and use Jet Engine. Crocoblock has been adding Gutenberg support to their plugins, and Jet Engine is the cornerstone of their plugin suite. In fact, Jet Engine is something of an all around beast. It has a ton of features and is a good fit for the site. In this video, I want to share the unexpected gotchas or issues I ran into during the move, as well as the nice wins or goodies where I was happy with what I found. If you like the video, please subscribe. It helps to spread the word about the channel. Let's start with the gotchas. The first thing I ran into is I had some issues using Crocoblock's Gutenberg blocks to access dynamic data. For example, if we add a dynamic field here and change the source, I got an error message. This block has encountered an error and cannot be previewed. So I had tested this quite a bit on development before going and making the change on the live site. So I was surprised to run into this error. I looked at the Chrome Dev Tools And I found this 403 error, which means forbidden. If you see that there is a very long string there, which is the call that was being made. I copied this string into my text editor and I did some Googling. And eventually what I realized was that on the production site, I had the BBQ plugin enabled and it has this option here limit URL requests to 2000 characters. And it has some warning here. Well, my text editor told me it was 2100 and something characters. So it was over the limit. I unchecked this, click save changes, and let's try adding this field again. So you see there are no errors now. The second gotcha or issue that I ran into is in trying to replace a toolset view. Toolset views can be like a listing. One of the nice things about toolset views is it's real easy to include custom fields in the output. So I had this view and I've replaced it with a crocoblock listing grid. And it listed all of the quote unquote solutions for dynamic data. It's on a post that I have on WebTNG. And you see here, like here's one record, here's the next record and so on. And as I was working on it, I noticed there were some problems. You know, this is not looking very good. These links here, this is supposed to be a button and this is a category. Then down here you have some sections that have run together. These are custom fields that have been added into the listing item. And that's the way you do it with Crocoblock is you first create kind of a single list item. And then when you add the listing grid, you select your list item from the list. So this is what it looked like in the Jet Engine listings editor. You see it's a single item here. Here it shows these custom fields are not run together and these have more space. This still doesn't show as a button, but anyway, one of the things I just wanted to comment on is if you look at the block options for the different custom fields, you'll notice there's not a style tab here or options for CSS as you normally see on the regular blocks. Instead, the way Crocoblock does it is you have another plugin called Jet Style Manager. 
So none of the Croco Block plugins have their own style area. Instead, you have this Jet Style Manager. Your mileage may vary on this, but as I was going through, since I couldn't actually see on this screen the problems the same as I did when working on the page, what I did is I went on the front end, I viewed it, Right, and then I went into the customizer, additional CSS, I went down to the bottom, and I just pasted in there my styles that I added. I'm not going to go through the process of adding them all here, but you see, you know, I made this like a regular button, and I added spacing between these things using these styles. And that was a little easier for me to do because I could see the changes on the page as I was making them. So once I got it looking kind of the way I wanted, I copied all of these and, you know, removed them from the customizer. I went into the loop item, the list item. When you go, instead of the block style, if you go to the list item there's a place for css that applies just to the list item so i pasted the style that i did in here clicked update and then let's close this so it wasn't a big deal but it was a little bit of an inconvenience anyway that was the second gotcha thing i ran into kind of minor but something i had to deal with Okay, this was a bit of a gotcha, I guess. It's really kind of more related to Cadence dynamic data support for Jet Engine than Jet Engine itself. But let's just go into one of these records so I can show you. See here, if I add the Crocoblock Jet Engine dynamic link, say, and I want to pick it from the list. Here's the solution link. See, it, it lists them all here. And you can pick them, and that's ideally what you want. You know, it's a big convenience. You don't have to remember the custom field name. But one thing Crocoblock does is it you can turn this off, but by default, it shows you the field name here with each of these, okay? So here it is, though, with the cadence button. Okay, and if we go to then, say, find the URL and choose a dynamic option, and it's a post-custom field, and we have to do custom input then. So that's a slight limitation with the cadence blocks they support. Jet Engine custom fields, but you need to type them in manually and then they work. So that was one gotcha that I ran into. So the next two goodies are kind of related. I'm going to use this page, these solutions here. You know, you see I have basically a loop with all the different solutions there. You know, they're all single items and then I have this custom loop. All right, this is a regular post. This is not the archive. I've been able to create this output here with the different custom field values and embed it wherever I want. And that is a feature similar to the way toolset views works. You can create custom listings with toolset views you can do it here with Crocoblock also using this listing and the grid item. Anyway, that's very flexible. I like the, that you can create your post grid and embed it and use it anywhere. Normally, if you use like a post grid block, you're not able to add custom fields to it. So 
this was one goodie. And then related to this is the query builder. The kind of workflow is you start, you create your single item, then you create your query. And so like, here's my query and you give it an ID. You say what post type it is, what status. You can specify keywords, your ordering. And then, you know, for me, I wanted it to pull records only where this taxonomy had the term CPT related. And then here is the pagination option minus one for retrieve all records. Not only then do you have the option to do just a regular post query, you can also do a taxonomy query, a user query, a comments query, a repeater field query, a REST API query, or even a custom SQL query. Okay, so you can write your own SQL here. So very powerful, very flexible. As I said, the workflow is you create the single list item, you create your query, then you add the listing grid, you select your item, and you select your custom query. If you're just used to picking a few of the block custom options for your grid, then this seems like extra work, but you have a lot more control and flexibility and you can use the custom fields. When you create a view with toolset, it has kind of a wizard you step through where you pick your fields and some conditions, but this is a lot more extensive. Okay, here's another goodie. It's the Jet Engine display conditions. Let's go to a page and take a look here. Okay, let's add a Croco block block. For example, here is their container block. And notice that it has this I here for dynamic visibility. Okay, so this is on Croco block blocks. Let's remove that. And let's add a core block like columns. Okay, this dynamic visibility option is also available on the core blocks. Let's remove this one. And let's add a cadence block. Let's say advanced text. Okay, and it's also available on cadence blocks. Okay, so we're getting this dynamic visibility option from Jet Engine available on all of the blocks here. Now, of course, cadence has some conditional display options. You have post options, you have archive, you have author comment. So those are different things you can trigger the display condition off of. And then you have comparison values. You know, so that's useful, but it is not anywhere near as extensive as what we get with the Crocoblock block visibility conditions. So here you see you have the option show if the condition is met or high if the condition is met, and then you create your conditions huge list of condition types that you have here. Just really extensive. Then you choose your field and you can pick your data source for the field. It can be, you know, the current page or post, custom data or a dynamic function. So we'll say if the post date greater than or equal to, and then we'll go some custom property here. Uh, I mean, just tons of things here, meta values, jet engine fields, post author, query term information. You know, so I don't know if this makes sense, but we'll just say today. And then the context is the current listing item. 
And then since we're doing a date compare, we would say date time. This is basically a builder for your conditions. And then, you know, you can add and or additional items here. So this was another goodie. I was very pleased at how extensive the display options are. When I was done, you know, making the change on WebTNG, I went to look at some of the pages, like here's the home page here. That's what this looks like. And kind of maybe a typical blog homepage, I'm not sure. I then went to GT Metrics and ran the test and got the performance report. And that's pretty good. I think just a slight bit better than it had been before. The saying to have a better cache policy and use a content delivery network. Anyway, I, I felt that was okay. And then there was this other page. This was the page I was showing you on the previous area where we had this long list of solutions. And look at this page here. You can see that it's a pretty long page. And then I have all of these kind of solutions that are considered in this post. This is that JET grid listing. And you can see there's a section for each one of these and it's quite long. So I've got a lot of data and information on this page. Okay, and there are the conclusions. I decided to try this page on GT Metrics as well to see what it said. And it was just a little bit not quite as good, but it was still a good grade, but it was just a little bit not quite as good as the homepage report. And one thing it said here is that it has excessive DOM size. There are a lot of elements. You know, I'm kind of not too surprised given how much I had on this page. So I've been happy with Jet Engine, and that's one of those things which could have been a gotcha, but actually turned out to be a goodie. All right, so some quick discussion and conclusions here. We looked at some gotchas. We had the long string triggering the firewall rule. We had the Jet Style Manager being a separate plugin and the style options not integrated in with the regular block options. And the fact that when using the cadence blocks, Jet Engine custom fields are supported, but you need to type the field name in when using them. And then we also saw some goodies, the flexibility of the Jet Engine loops or listings, the flexibility of the query builder. Those two together give you the ability to include custom fields in your grid listings and the ability to place grid listings wherever you want in your content. You're not restricted to archive pages. And then another goodie was the extensive Jet Engine display conditions on blocks, which is very nice. And finally, the fact that the site was showing good performance scores after I was done with the migration. I got some nice new features out of the move. Now, I hope this video is useful for you, gives you some idea of what's involved when using Jet Engine and what to expect and how to do things with Jet Engine and some of the benefits and features and power that Jet Engine offers. So there is a text summary of this video available on the WebTNG website. On the website, I also have lots of other reviews and resources and walkthroughs. Hope you found the video interesting. Thank you for watching.